Well, one thing we uh, one thing we do know, Bill, uh, that Bob Sharp has a the left side of his face as well as a right side. <laughs> We've seen only the right profile for uh, for three Gemini uh, pro launches up to now, and uh, now we know that he's uh, uh, there's a full human being in that cockpit <laughs> with you. Thank you very much. We hope that uh, we're going to be coming back to you for the next uh, two days because all of us here, of course, along with everybody in the whole space program, and I'm sure all of our uh, the boosters around the world for the space program are hoping that Gemini still gets off today and this rendezvous and docking uh, can take place for a first in space. Recounting the situation again, the uh, Agena was launched some uh, 40 minutes ago, but no word has been heard from it uh, since uh, six minutes and 20 seconds into the flight when it was supposed to fire its onboard uh, boosters uh, to gain the orbital velocity and the height that was required for the mission. At Houston, the count goes on in case Agena is located. Uh, it's at uh, T minus 54, 54 minutes before astronauts Shiraw and Stafford are supposed to be blasted uh, up into the skies to uh, chase that Agena vehicle to rendezvous and to dock with it. They entered the capsule just an hour ago, and they are waiting anxiously for word on Gemini. Meanwhile, the Agena, if it is in orbit and has not fallen back into the Atlantic, uh, is approaching the uh, western coast of Australia. And uh, for the first time uh, since Bermuda, there is a radar tracking station there with the capability of finding the Agena if it is in the heavens. And that uh, uh, is an anxiously awaited report right now. The reports are ominous, as you have heard from Paul Haney at uh, Houston. Uh, he is reflecting uh, the uh, unhappiness of the Mission Control Center there over the developments so far this morning. If, as we have said before, the mission has to be scrubbed, then the Shira, Stafford, Rendezvous, and Docking mission cannot take place until perhaps after the first of the year. It will take that long to erect another atlas uh, with the Agena space vehicle on top of it uh, at uh, pad 14 at Cape Kennedy. Jack King now and Houston. Uh, in, uh, Cape this Kennedy. is Gemini 6 launch control at the Cape. We are continuing our Gemini countdown at Launch Complex 19, still awaiting word on the status of the Agena spacecraft. We expect that our next information, or the information, will come into the Mission Control Center at Houston from the Carnarvon Tracking Station. In the meantime, we are at 52 minutes and 26 seconds in counting, and our countdown at Launch Complex 19 is going excellently. Uh, we are still awaiting word to determine our status later in the count. In the meantime, we have been doing some checking on the computer of the spacecraft that stands atop the Titan II launch vehicle and continuing our checks with the Air Force Eastern Test Range tracking network as far as the launch vehicle is concerned. From this end, at Launch Complex 19, we're looking good. We are awaiting word on the status of Agena. Now, T-minus 51 minutes, 47 seconds, and counting. This is Gemini 6, launch control. The Agena launched at 11 a.m. precisely on time this morning for 6 minutes and 20 seconds. It seemed that the flight of that target vehicle was perfect. The Atlas was putting it apparently where it was supposed to go. But then as the Atlas booster dropped away and the Agena was left on its own to go into orbital speed and to reach that 185 mile altitude uh, in which it was to circle the Earth and await the arrival of the Gemini, well at that moment it went dead. Nothing more has been heard from it since that time, and Houston and Cape Kennedy, they do not know whether Agena is in orbit or whether it has perhaps dropped back into the Atlantic. If it is in orbit, it is approaching the western coast of Australia at this moment, and uh, the Carnarvon tracking station there is trying to find it with radar. This may be the first word as to whether or not Agena is there in its orbit or not. If it is, and uh, there are no messages being received from it, the question will then rest with Houston as to whether it is worthwhile uh, putting uh, the Gemini up anyway and attempting to find the Agena in space with only the use of radar direction from the ground uh, or uh, scrubbing the Gemini mission entirely. 
They have until uh, after 3 o'clock this afternoon, two hours and a quarter after the preferred 12.41 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time launch time of the Gemini to make that decision. They probably will make it long before that, however. At uh, the top of the Titan rocket at Cape Kennedy's pad 19, Astronauts Shira and Stafford, Shira at 42, the oldest of our astronauts, a veteran of one space flight of six orbits, Stafford, a newcomer to the space program in the second class of astronauts who has not made a space flight as yet, wait in the capsule as they have for an hour and five minutes now. The count is T minus 49 minutes and 40 seconds and counting. Mike Wallace is with Herb Ballard of Lockheed, the builders of this remarkable Agena that has made 10 successful flights uh, uh, atop the Atlas. Uh, perhaps they have some more that they can tell us to what may be going on out there in space. Mike, Herb? Well, Walter, no one is rooting harder, I don't imagine, than Wally Shira and Tom Stafford for them to find the Agena, find that telemetry, except perhaps Herb Ballard of the Lockheed Company who makes the Agena. Is this... Has this ever happened before with an Agena, Herb? Well, one of the most reliable systems has been our telemetry system. It might be worth a word uh, of explanation. The telemetry system on the Agena vehicle is basically an information system. It tells you what is happening up there, much as Paul Haney is telling the audience today what is happening at the Cape. It has nothing to do with the function of the system as such, merely uh, explains to the people on the ground through proper interpretation of the status of the system or what the system is doing. So that all of the systems aboard the Agena itself may be in perfectly good shape. It's just a question of the uh, of Paul Haney having laryngitis. Uh, that's, that's probably a good analogy, Mike, right. I know that you don't want to speculate, but you have suggested that perhaps it would be possible without the telemetry still to go ahead and if not with the docking, at least with the attempt at rendezvous. Well, we do have another information system aboard the craft uh, up on the uh, forward of the docking adapter. We have the status lights. Now, these status lights do provide status on the, the uh, subsystems themselves in orbit, but of course, these can only be observed by the astronauts. So uh, they could have information in real time but the ground would not have this information. Of course, to read those symbols, they would have to be within perhaps 50 yards or 25 yards of the uh, docking yeah, car. Something like 15 or 20 yards, yes. Walter? Well, that's getting pretty close. And uh, uh, Chris Kraft, the mission control operator down there at Houston, has said uh, that uh, he would consider this mission a success if they got that close, that they don't have to dock for a successful mission. Obviously, for a 100% successful mission, they have to dock. But we haven't achieved rendezvous with a, another orbiting vehicle yet. No nation has. And uh, this in itself would be an achievement. So if they can, if they can even get that close, well, they've done something today anyway. The problem now is whether they're going to be launched at all, whether there is an Agena up there indeed uh, to, uh, to rendezvous with, whether they feel that without the reports back from the Agena, as Herb Ballard has just told us, uh, they can still, with ground tracking, uh, control uh, the, uh, the rendezvous point, uh, determine the rendezvous point well enough to uh, go ahead with the Gemini mission today. Down at uh, Cape Kennedy, where always I'm on the News Corps, there is a lot of speculation at a time like this, as without too much uh, information, the news media attempts to determine uh, what could have gone wrong. There's some speculation we're told now that something may have happened actually pre-launch to this uh, whole complex. They noted the fact that uh, Jack King, the voice of uh, mission control at Cape Kennedy, was reporting there was going to be a hold at T minus four seconds, but that at that precise moment, uh, the ignition took place. There was no hold. Uh, that combined with the fact there was a uh, larger uh, umbilical fire than usual in such launches is leading to some speculation that maybe something went wrong before the Atlas Agena actually took off highly speculative, though, at the moment. Uh, Chuck Von Fremd is our man down there and perhaps can tell us more about uh, what the talk is, Chuck. Uh, Walter, uh, the first missile I ever saw go was uh, the first Atlas back in June of 1957. 
and I think I've seen probably at least a hundred of them go in the eight years in between. Uh, I've never seen one take off quite the way it did today. Uh, the flames uh, seem to uh, come out prior to the actual count. Uh, usually, of course, we do see them at, at about T minus three seconds, and the missile is locked down, and then it takes off at zero. But uh, this was an odd-looking uh, launch uh, to my eyes and to the eyes of some other reporters down here who have been watching him for a long time. Uh, there is speculation now that possibly uh, that fire in the umbilical tower actually ignited just prior to liftoff. And in that case, of course, it's quite possible that uh, the delicate uh, brains of the Agena rocket were, were, were scrambled uh, even before the Atlas uh, shoved it up there into space. This is all strictly speculation, but there is general agreement uh, down here that this was a rather odd-looking launch for an Atlas. Uh, the Atlas apparently performed perfectly but it is possible that uh, the umbilicals uh, caused some trouble within the upper stage Agena, uh, within the Agena spacecraft. Chuck, is it possible that, uh, that uh, well, isn't it likely that if that were the case, there would be a, uh, information in the blockhouse and at the launch site itself already, they would know by now, 50 minutes after the launch, that something went wrong on the pad. Uh, and would have so reported, uh, rather than keep uh, Houston and everybody else in suspense. Uh, Walter, I think probably they're very frantically now going through telemetry data, trying to find out just exactly what did happen, as we all saw uh, on the screen here and uh, down here at the Cape uh, uh, with our eyeballs. Uh, the Atlas flight itself was a beauty uh, all the way. But there was this uh, funny little period, uh, three or four seconds prior to liftoff, which uh, has aroused some speculation. All right, maybe uh, we can re-rack the tapes of that and take a look at it ourselves and see if we can spot it. We'll, uh, go, we'll look into that. Meanwhile, the Agena, if it's uh, up uh, in orbit, is just over Carnarvon, Australia now, and radar tracking should be getting a fix on it. We expect a report from Houston shortly. Meanwhile, here's Jack King at the Cape. Our countdown is continuing at Launch Complex 19. We have just passed the 43-minute mark. Now 42 minutes, 54 seconds, and counting. Uh, at this time, if everything were normal and we had the Agena and the information on the Agena, we would be preparing on a status check to open the pre-valves in the Titan II booster. This permits the oxidizer in the Titan II fuel system to actually come down into the uh, thrust chamber. Uh, we do not plan to do this pending developments and pending the information we receive concerning uh, the Carnarvon track or the possible Carnarvon track of the Agena. Uh, our, our next information will be coming from Carnarvon and will be relayed by the Mission Control Center in Houston. Uh, we will continue to count, at least for the next few minutes, the Carnarvon data is due momentarily, and our situation here at Launch Complex 19 will depend on the information that is now being received in Mission Control. We're now at T minus 42 minutes and holding. We have just held at T minus 42 minutes. We will now switch to the Mission Control Center in Houston. And this is uh, Gemini Control Houston. Uh, Carnarvon should have acquired the spacecraft at 51 minutes and seven seconds after the hour. Uh, we've had a running conversation with them over the last two minutes and their report keeps coming back, no joy, no joy. They apparently uh, they are not seeing it on any of the various beacons that are available. They are also not seeing anything on the skin tracking. Two uh, events were to take place at this critical point of six minutes and ten seconds into the flight. One, the first, the primary propulsion system on the Agena was to light off at approximately ten, six minutes, ten seconds. And two seconds later, the shroud, the plastic shroud that uh, covered the target docking ring was to separate. It separates in the form of a clamshell. It was right in that period of somewhere between six minutes and 10 seconds and six minutes and 14 seconds that we uh, apparently lost everything. Still standing by here for, uh, as the conversation continues between our flight director here and officials at the Cape, as soon as we get more information, we'll bring it to you. This is Gemini Control, Houston.